What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 5, Episode 11. Not much happened in this episode. The only thing that really interested me was Kimmy's story. So I, I want to go ahead and start with that. So when we see Kimmy, she's driving with Maurice and she's talking about what she's facing as far as her treatments for her cancer. She's got 16 treatments of chemo. She's got surgery coming up and she also has, no, let me slow down. She has 16 treatments of chemo and then surgery and then radiation and luckily the cancer has not spread and she also found out that this cancer is not hereditary later on we see her at home with her family we see her family there um, we see her parents her sister her niece and of course her son Jalen and she tells her parents where she's going to be oh she tells her family what she's going to be facing as far as her treatments and she says that it has become easier to talk about about knowing that um, the cancer has not spread, that it's not genetic, and that um, there's a plan in place. And so it's becoming a little bit easier. I think it's finally sinking in, but she's feeling like, you know, she's got this, like she's going to be there is a solution to this problem and there's an end in sight. So um, I didn't know that when you have cancer that they can't, that they plan it out like that. Like they tell you up front, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing this first and then this and then this and just giving you like a timeline of how things are going to be unfolding. And I think that that's really, really, really good because instead of you just like, I guess, wondering constantly what's next, what's going to be happening, kind of like being in the dark with it all, you have a plan of action. And that plan of action will help you stay focused on the end goal, the result, the finish line, instead of just, you know, constantly thinking about what you're currently going through. So um, I think that that's, that was just really marvelous that she has a plan now. So in her confessional, Kimmy says that she's really worried about Maurice because Maurice is such a fixer and this is something that he cannot fix. And I just think that it's very telling of the kind of person that Kimmy is, that even though she's going through something as monumental as fighting cancer, she is still worried about someone else. She's still worried about Maurice and how he's taking this and, you know, how this is affecting him. That just shows you what kind of character, you know, that Kimmy has. So she tells her family that she believes that she's a thug at heart, meaning that she is going to beat this and she will come out um, the winner. She's going to beat this for sure. So um, we have complete faith in Kimmy. We have complete faith in her medical team. And we know that she's going to get through this with absolutely flying colors. Now let's go back to the beginning of the episode. The episode actually started off with Stormy. Stormy is shooting a commercial for her company, which I think it's called Canvas Beauty. Um, Stormy is out here shooting commercials. Okay. She's not doing just uh, sh regular schmegler photo shoots. She's out here doing full commercials. And Melody and Tiffany come in and so after the work is done they sit down and they chit chat and Melody tells them that Destiny had invited her to her own photo shoot and so the girls were like oh my god Destiny invited you somewhere and you went and this is you know this is big this is really big Melody does this mean that y'all are friends again and blah 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 and they got so hyped up and so excited about uh, Destiny and Melody getting together and I just didn't understand I don't understand why people are like rooting for Melody and Destiny to reconcile and become best friends again because what does it benefit I mean okay maybe like within the group I can see them being happy about it because you know when you have a group of friends and two of the friends are just absolutely not getting along it does make it extremely uncomfortable and awkward for everybody else so maybe that's the reason why they're so like gung-ho about destiny and melody reconciling but other than that i don't know what really would matter to them so they're asking you know how did it go does this mean that y'all are friends again or things good again between y'all and melody says you know we're moving forward and we're just going to be really cordial with one another and tiffany looks all kinds of confused like she doesn't understand like how could you have this meeting or this get together but then only just be cordial from here on out um 
I, I mean, Tiffany, are you like observing anything? I know that you're not around a lot because you're so booked and busy with your, your career, but are you picking up anything at all with the, your cast members? Can't you tell that a melody is over destiny and it will never be the same again? And don't you know that melody is the kind of person that once you cross her, that's it. And I don't know why Martel doesn't understand, but we'll get to that later. So Melody drops another bomb on them. And she says that uh, for her vacation to Destin, she has actually invited Martel and his mother as well. And so they were really shocked about that. And um, they were asking her all kinds of questions like, why would you want to do this? And so on and so forth. And so um, Melody is just basically, you know, doing it for the kids so that the kids can have something familiar. Or at least they can have their vacations the same. You know, everything else in their lives has been turned upside down and has changed so drastically that this is the one thing that they can be familiar with and get some kind of comfort from. So Melody also tells them that she will eventually have a conversation with her children that just because mommy and daddy are on vacation together does not mean that mommy and daddy are back together again. Moving on from there. Destiny. We see her with her cousin Demi. Now Demi was also um, her plus one at Stormy's um, little dinner that she had. So Destiny and her cousin Demi are going to be collaborating together with their companies or their businesses. I'm assuming what this means is that Demi is going to be selling her products out of Madani. Um, Demi is planning some type of an event, I guess, to launch her makeup line. I'm not really sure what the hell's going on. It's always some type of an event with these women. And she's going to be inviting all the ladies. Now, Destiny and Demi are supposed to be cousins. So then I found it kind of odd that Destiny asked her cousin, how does she know these women? And and Demi goes down the line and explains how she knew each one, like how she knew Martel. They went to school together, how she knew Melody. She did her makeup for her wedding, I think. How does she know Kimmy? I think she did makeup for Kimmy. How does she know Tisha, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just trying to understand, like, Destiny, like, how would you not know how your cousin knows these group of women that you that you work with or that you're friends with or whatever you want to call this dynamic? So... After that, they talk about Melody and Demi says that Destiny sounds like she's really hurt whenever she talks about Melody, like there's some type of pain there over the breakup of their friendship. And Destiny was like, no, I'm not hurt at all. She says, um, but I know that we can't move forward as friends, you know, knowing how, you know, I guess after their meeting and seeing how Melody was acting and her demeanor and the things that she said, I guess Destiny finally understands that it can never be the same. So she tells her cousin that, you know, um, moving forward, I just can't have Melody in my life the way she used to be. It can never be that way again. And the way that Destiny presented it, it was as if she was making that decision to not reconcile with Melody or not to uh, go back to the way it was. But in actuality, in my opinion, from their meeting, it looked like Melody was giving off all kinds of signals that, girl, we just can never be the same again. Um, that bridge has been burnt. That bridge is gone. We can never be what we used to be. And Destiny just had to accept it because I felt like Destiny, at, when they had their little meeting, I felt like Destiny was really trying to pull Melody back to being the way they were like real chummy chummy jokey jokey and I'm not talking about in the beginning when they were like joking around with each other I'm talking about when they sat down and had that serious one-on-one -on -one conversation um and talking about where we were and where we are now and how we're moving forward um it seemed like because when Destiny said, girl, you know, you love me, you know, you still love me. And Melody was like, well, there's a lot of things about you that I have a problem with that I don't love. But yeah, as a whole, as a person, yes, I still have love for you. So it just seemed like Destiny was trying to kind of like change the air, you know, kind of like change the atmosphere and make it very friendly and make it very comfortable and kind of make it like, you know, girl, we're, we, you know, we're always going to be friends, Melody, you know, we're always going to be tight. It's always going to be Melody and Destiny. And then when Melody was kind of giving her the cold shoulder, like, mm, I don't really need friends. I don't have a problem rolling solo or whatever. That's when Destiny, you know, kind of like understood what the deal really was. And so she kind of presented it to her cousin a little bit differently than the way it actually happened. But girl, if that makes you feel better and helps you sleep at night, go on and you can have that. So moving on to Melody. 
She's getting ready for her trip to Destin. She tells her mom that Martel and Martel's mom are going to be coming as well. And it kind of seemed like she was just dropping this news on her. This is like the day that she's leaving for Destin, I think. And it made it seem like this was the first time that she was explaining to her mom that Martel and his mom was coming. And I'm thinking that this is something that she would have already had told her mom. I thought the mom was going to be coming with them, but I guess not. I think it's just going to be Martel's mom there with them. So um, Melody says that uh, she tells her mom that she had a conversation with Martel's mom and they kind of sort of clear the air, you know, that whole laziness thing where Melody really wanted Martel's mom to know that I was not a lazy wife. I don't give a damn what your son said. And the mother-in-law said, or the ex-mother-in-law said, oh, Martel didn't tell me that you were lazy. That's what I said. I said that you were lazy. And that just still boggles my mind that anybody would think that Melody is lazy. You know, the way she's hustling around and she's always on the go, it just boggles my mind that people would think that she's lazy, but I don't know. We were not there in the beginning of their marriage. So who the hell knows? So Martel in his confessional, he says he keeps on, and this was like throughout every time it, that we, we saw Martel in his confessional, he brought this up quite a bit. He talked about how we don't know what the future holds for Melody and me, kind of like he's holding out hope that maybe there's a possibility that him and Melody will reconcile. And it's like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Martel, go have a conversation with Destiny. Um, take some notes from Destiny. When Melody is done, it seems like she is done. She's done, done. Moving on from there. So... Um, we are in Destin. Uh, we have arrived in Destin. The Airbnb that they have is really, really, really nice. I know those kids really enjoyed that. And Martel shows up with his mom and he brought Melody's favorite snacks, even though he kind of got it wrong. It's the thought that counts. And Melody thought that that was really sweet that he brought her favorite snack. Melody ordered Martel's favorite pizza, but they got the order wrong. And I'm just wondering to myself, is this a sign that... <laughs> Um, the Melody and Martel show um, has had its final curtain call. You know, they were trying so hard to do nice things for each other, but it was like a slight miss. And it just seems like the universe is saying, you know, it's dead in the water. There is no hope for any reconciliation here. Um, yeah. So Melody shows him around the house and... Martel started whining about the fact that he cannot, his room was not on the same floor as the children. Martel is annoying as hell. He is so annoying. It's like he's always, he always finds something to complain about. And Melody was, was saying in her confessional, I don't know why he's complaining because number one, I'm paying for this trip. He didn't have to spend a damn penny on this trip. You know, just be happy that you have a nice, cute little house to stay in by the beach with your children and with your ex-wife. Just be grateful for that and stop complaining about it, every little thing. Um, Melody does have a chance to talk to her children and she explains to them that, look, this does not mean that mommy and daddy are back together. I think the little boy even said, we know. <laughs> He's like, we know. And so that was good that she was able to have that conversation. Once again, another confessional from Martel. In this uh, confessional, he says again, you know, no one knows what the Lord has in store for him and Melody. And this must be before he ran into Sheree. Because he keeps on talking about there's always this possibility that, that him and Melody might, you know, get back together again. So I'm assuming this was all recorded before him and Sheree hooked up. Oh. <sighs> So it was a nothing episode, not much going on there except for, you know, the little bit of good news that we had for Kimmy and the cancer has not, and the cancer not spreading. So other than that, yeah, that's all I got to say. I ain't got nothing else to say. Next week's episode, I want to say so much from the clips that they showed us, but we know how it goes when they show us the previews. The way that it's edited a lot of the times is not what really went down. So what's the point of talking about it? Because it might not be what we think it is. So I'll just keep that to myself and wait until next week. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe and I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.